Hey, we're back. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on here with my space shuttle project. I've decided to focus on one at a time because I'm doing a bunch of other things at the same time right now. And uh, the way this was going, it looked like it would make more sense to wrap up the uh, Dragon kit and then attack the Rebel kit. So I got the two Rebel kits mostly assembled and primed and I've set them aside for now. Uh, so the Dragon kit is interesting because it gives me a chance to do some of the painting and uh, wrap this up. And actually, it's it turns out to be rather simple because of all the clear parts, which means I'm not going to paint the top of the wings. I'm not going to paint the nose area. I'm going to use decals on the bottom. And so um, it simplifies some things. So here we go. Here's what we got. Um, I've just loosely put the um, pods in here. And here you can see on this side, and they're not glued in yet, and it just kind of fits in there. And um, uh, it's not even kind of, and the clear part fits over the top. And so I'm gonna leave some of the edges as clear white. And this actually snaps on. I'm gonna use a little canopy glue to secure it, but you, you, you need very little glue. It's a very, very well engineered kit, but it got a lot of problems, a lot of inaccuracies. Um, so that's how that's gonna look. You can see the wing assemblies. I've got the decals on the side, and I put a flat coat over that. And then I glued and I touched the paint up on all the hinges. And for the RCS nozzles, there is no, no, uh, no nozzles, no, no thruster features at all molded in. So I made sort of decals using a hole punch and some uh, decal film. And then later I had problems with that, so I wound up using. Uh, some bare metal foil, and it's close enough. I wasn't going to try to drill them out and paint it because I'd have to make four in a row of the exact size all on a line, and I wasn't going to try to do that. And the plastic is a little thin anyway to drill that very deep, so forget it. Um, it's got two little nozzles that will glue on in the back later. Um, what else? So I glued this fuselage to the wing, and I puttied up this joint and then I had to repaint that end and that came out okay. Um, and there's the other side. There's a seam there you can see but that's going to be covered up by the aileron. Uh, so on the bottom I painted it and I just finished painting the leading edge with the uh, with a, a dark metallic color. I wound up using some Mr. Hobby uh, what's called stainless. It's a steel, stainless steel. And it's a very nice dark color. Too many metallic paints I have are just shiny aluminum. And that's actually what you see here. The uh, masking pulled off the uh, black, which is interesting. It pulled off the primer and uh, the Vallejo black from the bottom. I'm just going to touch it up by hand because what's going to go on here is some tile decals. So you'll never see. And they're opaque. They're based on white paper. So you're not going to see that anyway. Um, what else did I have to do? There's some touch up here, but again, I just need a, a black base black coat to put the decals on top of. So that's going to be coming up soon. So that's coming along. Meanwhile, speaking of decals, I've got a set of Keith McNeil's tile decals that I've started playing with. And it's just one piece printed on, on white decal paper. So you have to cut everything out yourself. And they're based on photographs. So it's going to be interesting. And so I started doing these on, on the, um, you know, the, the wing flaps here. But as you can see, it's one piece. And of course, there's two separate flaps. And the interior detail does, doesn't even suggest that it's made of two separate flaps. Uh, so that's a huge inaccuracy. The decals kind of pick that up, but I'm not going to mess with that. Keith's decals don't quite fit exactly, but, you know, it's all right. I don't know how well that's going to go. I noticed when I dry fit these before, you put the clear part on top and the whole thing kind of snaps together with very little glue needed. So that's going to be interesting when we get to that point. So I, I got a test of these. They fit pretty well. I think they're going to look okay. So um, the next thing is to uh, probably glue the nose area on, as we've seen before, and then start working on the decals on the bottom. What I'm going to do, I think, for all the kits, you know, in the back of the engine area, there's a white ring for the uh, uh, thrust vector accommodation, the gimballing of each engine. And I'm just going to 
cut a white circle of paper and glue it on there and call it close enough because that's what it looks like. It looks like a, it's actually a, a flexible cloth type surface. So um, that'll go on the back and detail these up, start putting these other things on. Um, I've just cleaned up the payload bay doors, but we'll get to that last because that can all be done separately. I'm going to open up the, the landing gear and, you know, actually put landing gear and have this one sitting on gear on the ground. So it's coming along. Oh, I also did paint the uh, the tail. You know, you got this vertical tail and, you know, clear um, a piece on the other side. So that, that came out okay. And there's a separate piece here that just kind of snaps in. And interestingly, um, it... It's not super accurate, but it's it's close enough. It's just weird how they did some of these parts. So it's coming, and um, we're making some pretty good progress. And then we'll get to the bell kits once we get this one wrapped up. So I hope you enjoy that, and stay tuned for more fun space shuttle models.